Okay, folks, so we're going to summarize some of the key rules for probabilities. Uh, first of all, let's just uh, recall our definition for a probability. Um, it's just the chance that an event will occur. It always falls between 0 and 1. And we typically write our result as a reduced fraction, a decimal number rounded to three non-zero place values, or as a percent. The formula to calculate uh, a probability is you just count the number of outcomes in the event divided by your total number of outcomes. So let's look at an example. Um, the chance of selecting a jack from a standard deck. Well, there's in total 52 cards, four jacks. Let's reduce that to one out of 13. Now, sometimes we have the word and. And if we're just working with one item, the way we interpret and is we're looking for an item that has both properties. So an example would be the following. The chance of selecting a card that is a red and an ace. So we're looking for a card that is both red and an ace. Well, there's two red aces in the deck. So it's 2 out of 52 reduces to 1 out of 26. Rule three, when we have or, and the events are mutually exclusive, meaning they have nothing in common. So the formula is probability of A or B, you add the probability of A plus the probability of B. So the chance of selecting a card that is a jack or a king, well, let me just put a probability notation in here. Well, there's four jacks out of 52 plus four kings out of 52, which is eight out of 52, and that reduces to four out of 13. Remember, this type of or is mutually exclusive. They have nothing in common, so we don't have to worry about overcounting items. The probability of selecting one item with an or but now the events are mutually exclusive, are not mutually exclusive, meaning that um, they do have something in common and we have to avoid overcounting our um, outcomes. Let's look at an example. The example is this, the chance of selecting a card that is a face card or a diamond. Well, there's 12 face cards, so 12 out of 52, that's the chance of selecting a face card, or means plus, the chance of selecting a diamond is 13 out of 52 minus there's three face cards that are diamonds, so 3 out of 52. We perform the calculations to get 22 out of 52. This reduces to 11 out of 26. Now, sometimes we see the word and and our outcomes are occurring sequentially. In that situation, we use our multiplication rule. If the events are independent, that just tells us the probability will not change as we select the items. And so we just multiply however many items we are given or we need to select using the same probability. So the chance of ordering pizza on a Super Bowl Sunday is 86%. Five people are watching the Super Bowl are randomly selected. We'll, we'll add randomly selected. So we're selecting a small sample from a large population. What's the chance that all five of them order pizza? Well, you just take 0.86 and raise it to the fifth power. So there's a 47% chance that all five will order pizza on that day. Now what happens if we have the word and, and we're once again selecting objects, but now we're dealing with um, dependent events. Every time we select an object, that object cannot be reused again. So we just have to make sure we modify the probability for each selection. So three cards are selected without replacement from a standard deck. Compete the chance that all three are hearts. Well the chance that the first card is a heart is still 13 out of 52. 
But remember, now we're just working with 52 items. So every time we remove an item, the probability changes. So we assume that um, a, a heart has been selected for the first item. We can't use that heart again. So the chance that the second card is a heart is now 12 out of 51. That card can be used again. And finally, the chance that the third card is a heart is 11 out of 50. Multiply these three out to get 11 out of 850. Now, whenever we have multiple events, one strategy is to use what's called a tree diagram to list out all the events. And we assign probabilities to each branch in the tree. So let's look at a problem. So a couple plants to have two children. Compute the chance that the two children will be girls. And so we draw the graph. You start here, the first child, boy, girl, each has a half a chance of occurring. And um, we continue with the second child. So if you have a boy, the second child can be a boy or girl. If you have a girl, the second child could be boy or girl. We just assign a probability of one half to each of those outcomes. So we want to measure the chance uh, that both children will be girls. Well, you just follow the pathway that leads to that outcome. Girl, girl, so that's one half times one half and that gives us one-fourth. So tree diagrams are really uh, good when you have more than one event to account for. So you can list out all the possibilities and make sure to assign probabilities to each branch. And whenever a branch stems from an outcome, these probabilities must always add up to one. Now let's look at a conditional probability. So a conditional probability, the two key words you're searching for is, are given that. And um, we have a standard formula, but sometimes we can just use common sense. But let's take a look at the formula. So, it's, so this little line here doesn't mean divided by, it means given that. That's Think of it as these two words. So the chance that B occurs given that A occurs first. Well. The formula states to calculate this, it's probability that both events occur divided by the probability that the condition occurs. So let's look at a problem. A student takes an, a student takes an exam in math and an exam in economics on the same day. The chance of passing both tests is 0.88. And the chance of just passing the math test is 0.91. Compute the chance of passing the economics test given that the student passes the math test. Well, following our formula, our condition is passing the math test. So we, we, count, we write down the probability that the person passes both tests, 0.88, divided by the probability of passing the condition, which is the math test, 0.91. So the probability that the person will pass the economics test, given that they've already passed the math test, 0 0.90. That's using the formula. We could also just use some common sense on some of these problems. Let's take a look at this example. A bag has five blue marbles, four red marbles, and six white marbles. A person selects a white marble, given that the marble is not blue. So in this, in this case, our condition is that the marbles are not blue. So we could just focus. So the, whenever we have a condition, that tells us just to focus on those items. So we focus on um, the, the marbles that are not blue. Of those marbles that are not blue, six of them are white. So probability that we select the white marble given that it's not blue. Well, six are white out of 10 marbles that are not blue. We reduce to get three fifths. So, and we could have used the formula, but it just might have made the problem overly complicated. And any time you have a problem that's overly complicated, we're more prone to make errors. So try to uh, use common sense first, see if you can figure out in that manner, or, and then if not, use the formula. We also have what's called the at least one formula. So just remember at least one, whenever we see 
that phrase, it's always 1 minus the probability of none. So let's look at a problem. So the chance that a customer will binge watch a series on Netflix is 8%. Um, these days, people probably do a lot of binge watching. So if four customers are selected at random, compute the chance that at least one of them will binge watch a Netflix series. Well, remember, we want at least one binge watches a Netflix series. So to calculate this, we want one minus none of them do that. Well, what's the chance that the uh, person will not binge watch, binge watch a movie? It's one minus 0 .08 point zero eight point nine two. So we're going to put this probability here. And since we're selecting four customers, we raise it to the fourth power. So our probability is 1 minus 0.92 to the fourth power, which calculates 0.284. So the probability that at least one, that means one or more of the four customers, uh, will binge watch um, a Netflix series is about 0.284. And then finally, we have to compute probabilities involving uh, contingency tables. So we're going to look at how we go about that process. So let's say we're given this contingency table. We always should find the total of each column in each row and find the grand total. It's 80. And let's take a look at a couple of problems. So let's say they ask you to compute the probability that a person from this survey is from Generation X and plays video games. Well, that's a straightforward problem. Um, it's an and. In this case, it's not sequential. So you're just looking for the, uh, the outcomes that have the following attributes, Generation X and play video games. Well, that's 1 out of 80. Another example, compute the probability that a person is a millennial or likes to travel. Well, in this problem, we add up all the millennials. There's 32, so 32 out of 80. Um, also, we add the column of all the people that like to travel, so 12 out of 80. But we're overcounting the millennials who like to travel, so we have to make sure that we subtract out. 4 out of 80. That gives us 40 out of 80, which reduces to 1 half. And finally, we have um, another type of problem with a condition. So compute the probability that a person hangs with friends, given that the person is from Generation Z. So in this situation, our, our condition is the Generation Z folks. We're not interested. <clears throat> in the Millennials or Generation X. So you just focus on that row that has Generation Z. There's 29. And then of to find the probability, we're looking for those people that like to hang with friends. Well, there's 8. So your answer is 8 out of 29. So typically, when you're computing a conditional probability, you're not going to be using the grand total. It's going to be the sum or column of one of these um, portions of the table. And that concludes a, a review of the probability rules. So um, stay safe and, and keep up the hard work, folks. Take care.